update on the spotify thing that might be a good one to go on so this is courtesy of the verge it looks like the um backlash and outrage about joe rogan's n-bomb tirade and you know planet of the apes um movie joke thing that he thought you know was funny which i think was funny to be completely honest but also that was probably the most egregious part of the whole thing right the n-bomb thing was like whatever um i listened to enough come town to you know know these whiteies love to drop the old um, n-bomb to be a little bit controversial and kind of like be like oh, i can't believe you said that i don't really take it too seriously but um that planet of the apes story was fucked but anyway regardless um you know the backlash is relentless it looks like because this is probably one of the things that they it, this probably isn't the reason why they want him out they probably want him out more so because he seems to be the one person everyone seems to be listening to in the states it feels like it feels like a lot of people don't trust msnbc they don't trust cnn they don't trust fox they don't trust a lot of the things in there um but they all seem to agree that joe rogan does say some good and bad things they all can kind of agree on it which again goes to speak to his influence so maybe this is more so the mainstream media the msn as they like to call them over there in the states deciding enough is enough we can't let this guy take away all the eyes and ears from our stations bleed us dry you know death by a thousand cut style why is he ranting into a microphone about you know ivermectin and all this sort of camp and drinking donkey piss to cure stuff and doing kettlebell swings i don't know whatever this guy talks about um and i'm joking about it because i listen to it all the time but you know what i mean but anyway so it looks like spotify had another meeting another clarification as to what their stance is regarding joe rogan we all know what the stance is they signed him for 100 million dollars anyone thinking that they're gonna dump him is just dumb unless literally evidence comes out that he runs over kids outside of school or something like that or he has said something super egregious like what alex jones says about sandy hook that's not happening even if that didn't happen they would still have to pay him out right he's probably got decent lawyers on deck i'd, I'd imagine on retainer who would be able to kind of do that deal somebody as smart as him is probably going through those motions and dotting his eyes crossing his t's in case that does happen and there's probably clauses involved in the contract there's loads of things like just to, to think these people in social media clearly sitting there thinking that they're just going to drop him like they dropped louis ck and stuff it's just nonsense like you don't give someone a hundred million dollars if you don't you know do your due diligence and do background checks and have all these different contingencies in, in place or you know have these different scenarios that you play out i'm sure that they kind of did that in that respect the only thing that's been surprising has been how shook and panicked the comedians have been around him. I feel like the way Spotify has replied has been fairly, you know, made sense completely how they kind of done it. I feel like they've kind of went through that process, but the comedians panicking around Joe has been a bit cringe. But anyway, um, this is courtesy of the Verge. So Spotify is more concerned about Joe Rogan than ever supposedly um joe rogan situation as spotify keeps getting more confused um as the situation has involved so has the company's treatment of the star podcaster one day it says it's hands-off platform that treats all creators the same the next it admits to having backdoor discussions with joe rogan and pulling episodes due to an outrage over the language the whiplash undermines spotify's narrative about how it interacts with rogan and other podcasters offers a window to the delicate relationship between rogan and the company that depends on him to stay different sorry to stay differentiated Differ differentiated um let's dive into where these things are lining up um i would rather these places or spots or sp yeah i'd rather spotify just you know stay as a platform if you then become a publisher that means certain artists who are on that platform or on that um you know uh, what they call it um dsp um you then have to take them off because clearly some of the people's works or lyrics or whatnot won't kind of directly in line up with maybe the founders ideologies or political leanings and you don't want that you just want there to be a place where you can go and tune in and check out podcasts that are in your kind of interest field without having the threat of somebody taking it off because it doesn't line up with what the world thinks should be on these platforms just be a platform allow people to put stuff on there and let the flipping market decide if people like it they like it they don't they don't but this kind of regulating of who gets to speak and how they get to speak and who they speak about and what they speak you know on is just annoying it really is it's more annoying than what he said it really is this kind of ardent limiting of free speech is just flipping crazy spotify has reiterated multiple times now that it considers itself merely a platform of podcasts which i agree despite paying rogan a 400 million to distribute his show what does that mean what's this snarky comment from Verge mean so because you pay somebody 100 million to come on your platform because you want them to bring 100 million dollars worth of eyes and ears and attention that somehow means that you're 
not a platform. What? I guess because if technically if you give someone money, you're basically kind of turning into a publisher because you're having to approve. I guess that's maybe the, I don't know, just a weird thing to say. That Spotify wants to believe Rogan is an audio creator um, like any other, which he is. Um, been a constant refrain since New Young and other musicians to play. Da, da, da. Um, Spotify was paying 100 million to exclusively to exclusively distribute the Rogan experience should not change anything according to CEO Daniel Ek who directly addressed the relationship he said even though JRE is an executive is an exclusive it is licensed content it's important to note that we do not have any creative control over Joe Rogan's content we don't approve his guests in advance and just like any other creator we get his content when he publishes it then we review it and if it violates our policies we take the appropriate enforcement actions but this is the problem that I had with Joe personally, myself as a long-time fan. When he originally signed to Spotify and all those episodes didn't pull over the 40 or so that they were, and the whole excuse or lie that he said was that, oh, there was still a lot of kind of getting ported over from his um, feed or his RSS or over to Spotify, so it takes some time to populate. And obviously that didn't make sense because a $100 million deal, you're not going to just start populating podcasts over to spotify on the same day you're going to put concessions in place to maybe speed up the process or whatever it just didn't make any sense but then people let him get away with that lie because it was 100 million dollars but it's, if you think about it to be kind of again somewhat critical and think with some sort of a rational mind and you know and not be too wrapped up in the fact that i like the guy that was maybe the first sign of trouble the fact that he was ready and willing to acquiesce to Spotify's demands the, the, the moment he signed and dumped those 40 episodes, there's no surprise. It should be no surprise that he's now acquiescing to get rid of the 100 episodes or so or 70 that contain him saying the M-bomb. It's easy to do it once you do it once. But then he tried to make it seem like he didn't do it. And then once it finally got out that he did and he kind of admitted in a joking manner, he kind of tried to act like it was no big deal. But it was because... You've always been Mr. Anti-censorship guy. You've always been the guy that's been rallying against, um, you know, corporate, especially tech lord, tech overlords. And in some parts, the whole reason why Joe Rogan went on Spotify was because of how he felt like YouTube were, you know, basically um, limiting his ability to do his show correctly by, you know, maybe blocking his show in some places, um, demonetizing it in some places, copyright striking here and there. They're just putting up loads of roadblocks that wasn't allowing him to do his show without a peace of mind. So that's why basically taking the guaranteed $100 million from Spotify sounded like a genius idea at the time. But that initial giving up of like those episodes really kind of set the precedent that you know, they're probably going to come from more down the line than they have. It continues here. It says, Eccles also clear that Rogan was critical to the company's success, telling employees that Spotify's catalog wasn't dif uh, differentiated from rivals and that signing exclusive like Rogan gave the company leverage to negotiations with Amazon, Google, and Tesla. Signing Rogan helped turn Spotify into a number one podcast app in the US, he noted. Signing one person. That's why I think sometimes these cancellation people are weird. Do you see how much value he's bringing to this company? Because they know stocks and share prices go up and down. This shoe shall pass in a few weeks, right? Maybe. Who knows? Because it looks like they're coming from super hard, but still, it will pass. He has made them the number one podcasting app in the US, despite Apple having a massive head start on Spotify. Basically, Apple basically created podcasts, right? In the kind of conventional sense like having it on your phone and stuff and syncing it download like they basically created it and somehow Spotify was able to jump over them right easy jumped over the, the fucking um jump man crazy so it makes sense why they would you know stand by him to that extent but it's also pretty indicative of startup culture right and i've been in places like that myself don't get me wrong we have flat hierarchies where the founder and ceo or whatnot is having to explain and justify his decisions at that level to regular staff it's mad isn't it and you're having to kind of literally say hey by the way the reason why we signed rogan is so we could like keep all of you guys some of you guys that like just retweet playlist or share stuff and whatnot you guys probably are stealing a living you're getting paid forty thousand dollars a year to send newsletter emails and whatnot the reason why we're able to keep you even though business isn't booming is because Joe Rogan's come in and brought all these listeners who are now signing up to premium, who are playing his, you know, his flipping podcast on loop and whatnot, who are maybe then deciding to listen to other bits of content that are on Spotify. Like, <laughs> like shut the hell up, innit? Like, this guy's literally paying your wages in a weird way, which again is another example of people 
not basically you know following through on their or not having a real moral backbone because if you really didn't agree with what Joe Rogan said and you really do disagree with his political leanings or how he maybe expresses himself you would also quit your job if that if Joe Rogan's on your platform as a defy as a mark of defiance or right, you would do that but people don't because they're full of shit um, it continues at this point Spotify's position seemed to be clear Rogan was crit were critically important to Spotify's success and he would be allowed to say whatever he wanted as long as it was in the bounds Dustin Jenkins Spotify's head of global communications and public relations affirmed to Spotify's employees that Rogan would be treated like any other creator under those rules we applied those policies consistently and objectively he she wrote to note to staff thank god leave it alone um, one of the interesting parts about it I thought uh was this bit about the hundred dollars or something? What is it? Ba, ba, ba. Where was it? There it goes. Yeah, this I thought was funny, right? Um, so after the PR crisis, Spotify reached out to Rogan and got him to agree to remove spell episodes of his show from his platform. X Memo also says the company will now di dictate. Uh, dedicate sorry 100 million dollars to licensing and marketing content made by creators from historically marginalized communities and move the company has not actually announced officially but clearly wants credit for so they're committed to dropping 100 million m's on people like me right little old negnogs like me right because they feel like you know he dropped too many m bombs on his show i for one will gladly take them up on that offer if they want to send me a spare one hundred thousand grand so i can upgrade my setup and get a studio and whatnot i will be happy to take that gladly if that means you know i have to sit in a room and have joe rogan's end bomb compilation play on loop you know without headphones i'll do it Rago. <laughs> rags like i'll do it. that might be one of the best things to come out of this nonsense but yeah what an absolute shit show of a situation in it What's an absolute shit show?